Hey guys, thanks for joining in with me today as I experiment with fluid acrylic art. For this pour, I had blooming flowers in mind. In a couple of my previous videos, I used paint pouring tools to create flower-like effects on the canvas. For this pour and the next, I'm using the swipe technique combined with blowing the cell activator out over the paint by mouth. I learned a few things while doing this first pour that led to some improvements for the next one. Just like with most things, acrylic pouring techniques improve with practice. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I really enjoy trying to match color palettes I've found online. I really like the colors in the one I worked with for these pours, but I did struggle a bit trying to get them spot on this mixing session. Before I start mixing, I pick out a selection of colors that are close to the palette I'm trying to recreate. As a small tip here, if you're trying to color match and you can't figure out which color is the best match, look at the color index code on the bottle. The color index code is a set of letters and numbers on most artist grade acrylic paints. Take a bottle of titanium white. It will have the pigment code of PW6. Now, look at the color you're trying to recreate. Say it's a blue color. Is it a bluish green? Or is it on the bluish violet end of things? By looking at the color index code on the back of your acrylics, you'll have a better idea of what pigments are creating that particular bottle of paint. So, if you were going to mix a bluish green color, it would be better to choose a bottle of Thalo Blue with a pigment code of PB153, which is Thalo Blue Green Shade, as opposed to one with PB156, which is Thalo Blue Red Shade. Paying attention to the colors you're actually mixing together will help you avoid creating muddy, dull colors when you're creating custom blends. Even though I didn't get the colors exactly like the ones I based them on, I was still very happy with how they came out. Recently, I did a test with Penetrol as cell activator additive. If you saw that video, you may remember me saying that I wanted to test out a different ratio the next time I worked with it. For this cell activator, I'm using a mix of Floetrol and Penetrol. I used two drops of Penetrol per ounce of Floetrol, then mixed in the black acrylic paint. I think this change made a huge difference in the results. I kind of dove headfirst into this pour without really planning as much as I should have. Pretty typical, honestly. In hindsight, I wish I would have thought about the layering of everything a bit longer, but it is what it is. I decided to do some blooming flower type pours after a conversation with my mom where she said that the pores that look like flowers are her favorite. I don't know why, but I've just never really gotten the hang of blowing paint out. Whether it be by mouth, by straw, or with a hairdryer like in a Dutch pour. I'm just never quite as satisfied with my results. But can't get better at them without practice, so here we are trying again. To blow out the smaller flowers off the side of the stem, I apply the cell activator to the middle of the colors. From there, I blow down and then out to the sides. I had to cut a lot of this action from the video because my head was in the way, but that's the idea, down then out. These flowers came out looking a bit more abstract than I was actually going for. Like I said, I kind of jumped right in and didn't plan too much. I think that I overstretched and probably should have stopped a bit sooner to get it to look more like a bouquet instead. I do absolutely love how these colors came out. I'm a huge fan of stargazer lilies and the palette reminds me of them. The colors really pop against the gray background. By the way, I used Tommy Art mineral paint and petroleum mixed with Floetrol for the base color. In the next video, I learn a bit from my mistakes with this canvas, and the results better match a beautiful bouquet of blooming flowers. I had a better idea of how to layer the paint and kept the stretching to a minimum. 
Mom fell in love with the next one, so I believe it's a winner. How you create your own blooming flower pour is completely up to you. Test out different layers of paint and see how it affects the color patterns of the blooms. If you swipe the stem of the flower, try taking multiple swipes instead of one continuous swipe across the canvas. There are tons of tiny changes you can make to really make it your own. Of course, each and every acrylic pour is unique. It doesn't matter if you use the exact same colors across 20 different pours. They will all be unique in structure. That's my favorite part of fluid acrylic art. Each and every time you apply paint to the canvas, you're creating something that is completely unique. Combining your own set of techniques can take that uniqueness to another level. Your set of techniques may be completely different from mine, but we're both creating wonderfully individualized artwork. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Don't forget to join in next time to see the improved Blooming Flower Pour. I come out with new videos every Tuesday and Friday. So go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out. If you have any questions about this pour or just want to say hi, feel free to reach out in the comments below. I really enjoy hearing from you guys, so don't be shy. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the video. I'll see you next time. Bye!